In this video, I will guide you through the proper diagnostic procedure for a defective circulator pump on the gas boiler simulator. Begin by clicking the start button on the phone. Next, click on the thermostat icon at the bottom left of the page. Once at the thermostat, click on the system selector switch to the heat position. This will also turn up the temperature setting of the thermostat. Our next step is to proceed to the boiler to verify the sequence of operations. Click on the boiler icon at the bottom of the page. Once at the boiler, click on the bottom door to remove the cover. Here we can see that the burners have ignited, yet there's no heat. Next, click on the radiator to see if any heat is being emitted from the radiator. Here we can see that there is no heat coming from the radiator. This indicates a water circulation problem, possibly a defective circulator pump, a defective combination aquastat, which turns both the circulator and burner on and off on a call for heat, or it may be something as simple as air in the system, which can be bled from the system to alleviate this problem. Our next step is to go to the circulator pump to verify that it is operating. The circulator pump will have a graphic indicating that it is operating. Here we can see there is no graphic shown on the circulator pump indicating that the circulator is not running. This eliminates an error issue. This means that either the circulator is defective or possibly the combination aquastat is defective. Once again, the combination aquastat shown here as I remove the cover provides both control of the burner, burner high limit, and circulator pump on a call for heat. The combination aquastat integrates the system transformer, the high limit for the burner, as well as the relay to control the burner and the circulator pump. On many boilers, these components are all separate as opposed to being integrated into one control as shown here. Let's take a look at the troubleshooting flow chart to review the steps that I've just shown you. Click on the top tab on the left of the page to open the troubleshooting flowchart. If we follow the troubleshooting flowchart, we can see that the burners have ignited, yet the circulator does not operate. Our next step is to measure for 120 volts at the L1 and L2 locations on the lower right of the combination aquastat. Next, let's remove the digital volt ohm meter or multimeter from the toolbox. Click on the meter icon and turn the selector dial to AC volts. At this point, to center the combination aquastat, right click on it and zoom in on it so that you can easily identify the terminals. Click on one of the meter leads and place it on the glowing hotspot at the L1 terminal on the combination aquastat. The black lead can be placed on the L2 terminal. Here we can see that we have 120 volts coming to the aquastat from the service switch. Our next step is to verify that the combination aquastat is sending 120 volts to the circulator pump. This can be verified by measuring for voltage at the C1 and C2 terminals on the combination aquastat. Simply move the two meter leads to the C1 and C2 locations. Here we can see that 120 volts is measured. This verifies that the combination aquastat is in fact sending 120 volts to the circulator pump. To eliminate the possibility of a broken wire or a faulty connection, let's measure for this 120 volts at the circulator pump. Remove the meter leads and store them back at the meter. This can be done by simply clicking on the leads and putting them back on the meter. At this point, we also may want to replace the cover of the combination aquastat. Next, let's go to the circulator. Right click the circulator to center it in your field of view. You may want to zoom in a bit. Place the meter leads at the glowing hot spots at the circulator. Here we can see that we have 120 volts at the circulator pump, yet it is not running. This verifies that the circulator pump is faulty and needs to be replaced. Prior to replacing the circulator pump, let's put the meter back in the toolbox turn the service switch to the off position. We don't want to work on any live circuits. Click on the circulator pump and replace it. The repair summary states that this will cost $230. We do wish to proceed. And we can see that this corrects the problem. Our next step 
is to turn the service switch back on and replace all caps, covers, and screws on the boiler. Last but not least, click on the broom to clean the work area. And remember, if needed, you can review the troubleshooting flowchart by clicking the top tab on the left of the page. This will walk you through step by step the troubleshooting procedure. In addition, you can also use the system wiring diagram, which can be found by clicking the tab on the right of the page. This will help you with component location and meter lead location. Good luck.